What's going on smart people? Today I was given details pertaining to my first exam of grad school. It is in five days. We knew about the exam for like the past two weeks, but today we were finally told what it will be on. We had a good idea beforehand, but now we have a very clear idea. Speaking of five days, five days from now will be my 200th daily physics upload, which means aside from the week that I was moving here to New Mexico, I've uploaded a video every single day for the past 200 days, which is kind of a big deal. Also, today I hit 10,000 subscribers, which is also sort of a big deal, at least to me. So I figured I'm going to merge the two slightly big deals into a bigger deal and have my special video on Tuesday, which will be my 200th daily physics video. Uh, I have an idea of what I want to do for it, but I'm still open to suggestions, so leave them below in the comments. But now let's talk about the exam. The exam is for classical mechanics. It is three questions and we have an hour and 15 minutes to complete it. That leaves about 25 minutes per question. Quite similar to how the physics GRE exam is structured. During the exam, we are allowed to reference our lecture notes, our old homework assignments, as well as the textbook, which is the Goldstein Classical Mechanics textbook. We would be allowed to use the internet as well, but people would cheat. I mean, come on. Now, why are we allowed to use all of these references? Well. Grad school is training us to think like physicists, and physicists can reference things. Also, if you're not given a formula sheet or something like that, you could always try to use that as an excuse after taking an exam as to why you didn't do well on it. So, this kind of scenario is kind of like the professor saying, Fine. Here's every resource you could possibly need. What's your excuse now? Now, if you've ever had an open book exam before, you'll probably agree with me that they're always noticeably more challenging than the closed book version. So I can understand people preferring the closed book easier version to the open book harder version. But there's just, there's just something to a professor effectively saying, oh, you wish you could remember how I phrased that explanation that one time? Here's my lecture notes. Or, oh, you remember this section, but you don't remember how to apply the equations. Here is the homework examples that I handpicked for you to solve with the work solutions. Or maybe you think I'm a bad professor. I'm not a very good lecturer, am I? Here's the literal textbook on the subject. Is there anything else I can get you? Others might argue that it's just an excuse to make an exam harder, but I mean, that way of thinking just pisses you off and this way of thinking just makes you look at it as a challenge, so. But let's get into what the exam is actually covering. There is three sections of testable material. We've got the law of attraction, horoscopes, and then positive karma. Just kidding, this is on real science. The first section is principle of classical mechanics, second is Lagrange's equations, and the third is the central force problem. And out of those three, there are branches of topics because, and thankfully so, because principles of classical mechanics sounds pretty vague. So when it comes to that topic, it covers mechanical motion, conservation laws, constraints, de Lambert's principle, and dissipation function. Uh, Lagrange's equations will cover Hamilton's principle, variational methods, Lagrange's equations of motion, con conservation theorem, and the energy function. And then the central force problem can cover equations of motion, classification of orbits, virial theorem, Bertrand's theorem, Kepler's laws, and scattering in a central force field. Out of those topics I just mentioned, the ones that I definitely need to do some revision with are de Lambert's principle, and really orbits as a whole, solving the equations of motion and then being able to describe the orbit in terms of things like the energy and the eccentricity and seeing how all of that fits together. Uh, for de Lambert's principle, it's really easy to derive the Lagrange equations of motion from Hamilton's principle. I can understand that fully. It makes total sense to me. When I'm going through the derivation using de Lambert's principle, I can follow it but I can't look at that derivation and be like, yes, I could see myself being the person who came up with that. I totally understand the thought process. I'm not there yet. It seems really abstract and kind of out of left field why you would call things certain things with that derivation. So I want to revisit that and make sure that I really understand it. So the exam is three questions and it's covering three sections, but the professor did not say that there's gonna be one question from each section. He said to think of it more of like a statistical distribution of probability. So long story short, that means study all of it and find out which ones make it to the exam, I guess. If you want to find out more about those specific topics I mentioned, you can literally just Google the Goldstein Classical Mechanics textbook PDF because those are the names of the chapters and you can just go through that for yourself. One thing that you might have noticed if you're in undergrad is that those topics sound an awful lot like what you would learn in undergraduate classical mechanics because it really is. We just take it a little 
a couple steps further, less assumptions make it more general. But if you were to boil down all of those topics into a short list, it would really be conservation, Lagrangian mechanics, orbits, and scattering. But I got a long weekend of studying ahead of me, so I'm gonna get to it. I'll probably end up making a video preparing for the exam. We'll see how it goes. Remember to comment in the comment section suggestions for the 200th slash 10,000 subscriber special, and I'll see you guys there.